So I went down a bit of a rabbit hole of trying to find the best support settings to get a really nice uh, finish when you're printing a flat surface on support material. This is a little test piece that I made purely uh, for this test. Um, of course, if you did want to print out something this shape, you would just print it out flat on the plate and you wouldn't need any supports. The best solution is always to orientate the object in a way where it won't need supports. If you can't do that, then design model in a way where you can. If you're still unable to do that and you have to print a large flat surface directly on support material, hopefully this video will help. So as a control, I printed out a piece with no supports at all. The surface finish, of course, is not very good, it's very stringy. The layers actually didn't fuse with each other. It's also not flat, there's quite a large mound there, which has also ruined the surface quality of that top layer. For the second test, I used support material. I did change the base pattern space into 3mm, since I felt like it would be enough to support the top layers. I changed the top interface layers to have three layers to give the filament a nice flat surface. And the interface pattern is the grid. This uh, actually worked quite well. It is slightly rough, but depending on what you're using it for, this could most likely be good enough for most applications. This part actually came off very easily. This stuck to the build plate when I was taking the part off. You can see a slight waviness, and if I zoom in, you can also see some of the layers have slightly twisted with each other. To improve the quality of this, I thought I would change the top pattern to be something uh, slightly smaller knit, larger surface area, less space for the filament to uh, droop down into and make that wavy pattern, which is where this came in. This is called the rectangular interface. I actually made a mistake. It's not called rectangular interface. It's actually called rectilinear interlaced. Just wanted to clear that up. Back to the video. Much larger surface area for the filament to uh, print onto. However, I feel like the surface finish wasn't as good as the previous test. I was a little bit confused about how this could happen, especially since this had a larger surface area. This actually feels a lot rougher than this surface. And I think I figured it out now, but I didn't know during the time, and I'll get back to that. This support material was also a little bit harder to remove. I had to use a small set of pliers to pry it out. At the time, I thought the solution to get a better surface on, uh, on the model was to reduce the space between the top of the support material and the bottom of the model. By default, it's set to 0.2mm. I set it to 0 0.1. Yeah, don't do that. This was an absolute pain to remove. Slightly embarrassingly, because of how I was holding the pliers and really trying to pull this out, I've actually, I've actually slightly bruised my hand. However, the surface finish on this is amazing. I did not expect to get such a good surface printing directly on support material, you could mistake it for a top layer. It's incredibly smooth. So maybe worth the effort, worth the pain, I'm not sure. It depends on what you're printing. And a side note as well, depend on the parts. If the support material is on the outside, it'll be much easier to remove because it's, I have nowhere to grip, I had to use pliers. To hopefully improve on this problem, I increased the distance from the top of the support material to the bottom of the model to 0 0.15, which definitely made it easier to remove. Still clearly took a bit of effort, but that did pop out a lot quicker. The surface finish is definitely good. It's not quite as good as the last, but it's definitely 
top two. This is when I realized the reason that the Model 2 and 3 had such different service finishes. The rectangular interlock pattern has a much larger service area than the grid pattern, which you would assume would give you a much better service finish. However, it has much more points of contact with the model, much more tiny points where the plastic fuses. So when you rip this part out, you end up with a piece that has many more slight bumps compared to the grid pattern, which actually has a lot less, and that's why it feels a lot smoother. Which brings me to the final test. This is using the grid pattern with three top layers and a 0.15 gap between the support material and the model. This gave a great finish, and I feel like for me, would be suitable for 99% of the parts that I want to print. A little tip as well is I added two wall loops on the support material. This not only helps keep the support material in one piece when you're removing it, but also ensures that the top layer support material has an edge to print onto for the entire top surface. These corners uh, curl up the model is printed on top, which is why you then have some imperfections in the corners. I've also used a honeycomb pattern. On a model like this, it won't make much of a difference, but depending on the piece you're making, that might give you a little bit more surface area or just places for the top layer to adhere to. I could definitely do more testing, but I'm pretty happy with this. It's nice and uniform, it's relatively smooth, and it was very easy to print. And this is again comparing it to having no support material at all. One thing I unfortunately didn't account for is the weight of the different support material. Depending on how many parts you print in, this will be an important factor. To find the best settings for you, I would suggest having a minimum of three top walls and then increasing the size of the infill pattern until the quality starts to reduce. Hopefully you found this video helpful. It's not the type of content I was expecting to make. I saw a post by the YouTube channel Built, and originally I was gonna make a short, but after doing a bunch of testing, I realized this is too much information to fit into three minutes. If you have a better solution or you feel like you found settings that give a better service finish, please let me know. One last quick piece of advice. If you are going to print using the rectilinear interlaced uh, interface pattern, then make sure the final layer of your support is going in a different direction than the first layer of the actual model. So. This is the support layer, it's going left to right for that last layer. And then the first layer of the actual model is going up and down. If it is not, then you risk the filament seeping in between those gaps and making it even harder to remove. I've actually slightly bruised my hand. If you're using the grid pattern, then it's not an issue, it's flat either way. I thought I was done with editing this video and then I realized I didn't actually film an outro. So a few things. Firstly, I just want to say if you got to this part of the video, thank you so much for watching the entire thing. Please leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you would like to get in contact, the best way is to DM me on Instagram. It's at Double Sketch Studio. You can also see some of the other work I've done there. If I was a smart man, I would use this opportunity to plug something so these are plant pots that I designed and made. They are available now if you are in the UK at doublesketchstudio.com. The story about the design of these can also be read on the website as well. I also design and make lamps. Those again can be seen on the website if you're interested.